Okay. Do you wish to make an opening statement? I'll save you from that, Senator. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Senator Patrick. Yes, thank you. Um, I might go to a small issue first and then move to a slightly bigger issue. Um, and this is uh, just something I happen to be in Arkarula at, at some stage in the middle of the sticks in South Australia and bumped into a pilot who suggested that CASA were considered, considering changing the regulations in relation to SAR aircraft. And um, basically in South Australia, the, uh, the, the, the SAR aircraft that do a, do a lot of stuff around Adelaide um, are single engine. And the, 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 rule, the proposed rule change was to be that those single air engine aircraft could fly with crew at the moment they got a, a, a passenger on board, um, that they would be outside of um, a, a requirement, which was then to have two engines. I just want to explore whether or not that's actually being considered by CASA. Um, Senator, I might, it's a level of detail. Sure. Um, so Pip Spence, CEO, Civil Aviation Safety Authority. I'm not too sure if Mr Monaghan's got any background on that in relation to our new flight operations regulations, whether it's related to, to that or not. But otherwise, we can take it on notice. Sure. Senator Chris Monahan, Executive Manager of National Operations and Standards. Um, if I understand your question correctly, it's around search and rescue for helicopters. Yeah. And there is a question depending, and, and I would perhaps need some more detail, mm. of the dwell time you have in, a, in the area where you're hovering, yeah. if you're a gross wave with your inability to recover if there's an engine failure. Um, or have enough power to, to um, recover the, the aircraft. So it, it would depend on the circumstances and the aircraft itself. So with more detail, I could Well, so the more. aircraft that, uh, that, that I've seen are the, that look like an Iroquois uh, style aircraft, single engine, uh, red and white, and uh, fly regularly out of the RA. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd be happy to look into it. Don't, I don't know the specifications well, of the aircraft or, right, so, or the loading. Uh, if, if you could sort of take that on notice in the sure. context of South Australian aircraft um, because they've clearly been operating safely for some mm. period of time um, and I'd like to know if you are going to change a regulation that in some mm -hmm. way would require them to upgrade to double right. to twin engine aircraft, that's right. a costly uh, proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the rationale behind the change um, okay. Uh, who, yeah, how you've come to the conclusion that operations that have been ha occurring quite safely are no, no mm. longer sure. no, no longer safe. If, if, uh, yeah. and I only know that in, in, in mm -hmm. the context of South Australia. I think most uh, most uh, SAR aircraft, you know, the um, uh, Westpac and so forth, mm -hmm. are all mm. twin engine. But yes, Senator, I think it'll tie in with the the new flight operation regulations that come into effect. Mm. Um, later on this this year, but as Mr. Monaghan said, we'll we'd get some detail and come back to you on yeah. notice. Because my concern is, you guys sit in your office and you write stuff that just makes it harder for everyone all mm. of the time, and um, um, you haven't been around as long. Uh, just in, in terms of estimates, so, you know, various different CEOs that have come come forward, and of course the Parliament recognised this in uh, legislation a, a year or so ago, where it placed a requirement on CASA only um, or to not just consider safety but also to consider the health of the industry. And that's the bigger question I was going to ask as to what you're doing to give effect to the will of the parliament. Yeah, um, Senator, it's a really good question and I've been talking to the team because I was actually in sure. the department when that um, piece of legislation went through as the relevant deputy secretary, so mm -hmm. I'm well aware of the changes. Essentially, we now require anyone who's taking forward um, a, a standard as required in the in the legislation to demonstrate how they've taken into account the the cost impacts and the the ensuring sort of risk proportionality which is what's required in the legislation so you know i could bore you with templates but basically we do have arrangements to make sure that everyone um, does take those factors into mm. account so in some sense this might be a, the, the low level question i've asked might be mm. a test of of how you're approaching Although, uh, Senator, sort of I things. think um, the flight operations regulations, I think, would have been 
made prior to that amendment to the uh, the amendment to the legislation. But it's a good it's a good test to see to make sure that we're taking mm -hmm. actions that relate to safety, um, but not at a at a disproportionate impact on the industry. Yeah, sure. So you know, the general view of many members of the committee, you know, Senator Still, um, I know, shares this view, um, is that you know pilots are now so focused on meeting uh, CASA requirements that they are not focusing on flying you know that, that in order to in order to carry all the documentation they just about need to double size the aircraft that that's I mean that's an exaggeration <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it, it goes to um, uh, you know uh, air services annual report that says eight percent there's been an eight percent decrease in general aviation over the last uh, uh, financial year and indeed I know Senator Macdonald the chair has great concern in this area because we thought it was as low as it could go. Yeah. Look, Senator we take very seriously the concerns and I've spoken to quite a few um, representatives from the GA sector since I started and we are looking at what is it within our regulations that we can provide some uh, support or um, relief for the GA sector and there are already some um, activities underway which will go go some way to providing some some relief for the GA sector. Okay. Uh, where are we at with uh, Angel Flight? Um, Senator, the instrument's got an expiry date of March next year, I think, and we're currently working through what the, what the appropriate um, options actually would be, but whichever way we go, if it's a renew, um, the instrument would certainly be making sure we do that in consultation more broadly, but also talking to Angel Flight and obviously Little Wing as well. All right. Well, so it would be a case of we'll watch this space. Yeah. Watch this space. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Senator Patrick. Senator Sheldon. Hello, Ms. Spence. Um, is there just a couple of questions uh, for this evening in relationship to the Minister's statement of expectation for the board. Firstly, I note the statement of expectations provided to the board for the period of the 1st July. 2021 to the 30th of June 2023 was signed by Michael McCormick on his last day as Deputy Prime Minister. Does that give you any concern, cause for concern? Well, no, Senator, it'll stay into effect until or unless an, another statement of expectations issue. So that'll really be a matter for the department um, if there's any other considerations underway in that space. So, so it's not a concern that um, on the last day a, a significant piece of um, a statement of expectations is signed, a, a significant piece for CASA, yeah. um, and that the new minister has been uh, novelled as a result of that having to wait until the 30th of June 2023, is that correct? Well, Senator, um, not a matter of concern, and also it's my understanding that if the Deputy Prime Minister wanted to issue an updated statement of expectations, there would be nothing that would prevent him from doing so. Thank you. Have you met with the current Deputy Prime Minister since he res res uh, resumed his right, this role? Uh, not yet, Senator, but I've worked close, closely with his office and we do have a meeting in diaries for both myself and the new chair with the Deputy Prime Minister. So that'll be the first meeting for the chair, as, the chair of the board as well, is it? That's correct. Thank you. Um, So you're, you're saying to me that in practice you don't think there is a problem with the board and by extension yourself operating under a statement of expectations that in essence was issued by a previous government minister operating under a different coalition leadership? No, Senator. Have any industry stakeholders raised concerns with you about this disconnect? Uh, not about the statement of expectations, no, Senator. And what, what concerns have the stakeholders raised about um, changeover? Uh, Senator, they haven't raised concerns about the changeover of the Deputy Prime Minister. Um, on, um, question, on Just Culture, um, your website states that you apply Just Culture principles to your regulatory actions, which you define as, and I quote, an organisational culture in which people are not punished for actions, omissions or decisions taken by them that are commensurate with their experience, qualification and training. So effectively you aren't punishing people for fair and honest mistakes, is that correct? That's correct, Senator. 
And is the rationale for that so that you don't dis disincentivise people self-reporting mistakes? That's correct, Senator. Thank you. Do you expect that the organisation that you have regulatory authority for, such as airlines, um, adhere to those same principles? Yes, Senator. The Australian Licensed Aircraft Engineers Association has shared a very troubling story about an engineer at Rex who made an honest mistake in applying an incorrect degree of torque to an aircraft propeller. I'm told that particular aircraft can be fitted with propellers from two different manufacturers, each with their own slightly different torque settings. I'm told that when he realised his mistake, he told his supervisor and took the necessary steps to fix the issue. He then recalled a similar incident had occurred with another engineer a few weeks earlier. So he made an official report through the safety management system to update the manual and prevent others making the same mistakes. Are you familiar with this case, what I'm talking about? Yes, I am. I've met with the, um, the ALIEA and they raised this, this specific case with me. So based on the just culture principles we've just discussed, that engineer is, if anything, would be com commended for resolving an ongoing process issue. Instead, he has been issued with the last and final warning letter by Rex, which mean, meant if he made another mistake, he would be fired. Does that sound like just culture? Um, Senator, I don't have um, all the details in front of me, but I do understand there is more to it than what is in terms of sort of some of the previous um, the, the work of the, the person in question, but I don't want to go into a level of detail that I don't have in front of me, so if it would be helpful, happy to provide a separate briefing to you or to the committee on the, on the case in question. Oh, that would be helpful, but you might be able to just help me, help me quickly with this question. Um, was it, it's said by the ALAEA, and Australian licensed Aircraft Engineers Association that um, that person was terminated, not, oh, sorry, that person received a final letter of warning on the basis of that report that they did. I mean, there may, you're, you're saying to me there may be some other instances that you've, That's my that you're aware of, Senator, but they're that saying that this was made primarily re as a result. What triggered it, the final letter of warning was, um, uh, the incident I've just explained to you. Yeah, Senator, and as I said, I don't have all the information in front of me, but my, the advice that I have is that it, it's more complicated than, the, than as it's being presented by the, um, by the ALAEA. Is the ALA said that when they raised this issue with you, you found no evidence of any wrongdoing? Mr Crawford's response to the ALAEA said you hadn't actually checked the records of Rex had on the employee, though I quote, appropriately the audit team did not have access to Rex's personal records, HR or industrial relations records. Even after the ALAEA provided you with a copy of the warning letter, you did not take any action. Do you think this complete lack of protection for, from CASA gives engineers the confidence to report safety issues? As I said, Senator, I wouldn't describe it in the same way that it's been put to me um, in your, your line of questioning and to ensure that you had a sort of a more comprehensive picture would be very happy to organise a separate briefing for, for you or the, the committee more generally. I'm, I'm informed, thank you. Uh, I'm informed that uh, this isn't an isolated incident but that a, a, at Rex the management have created an atmosphere of fear which ultimately just dissuades people from reporting safety issues. That is a very concerning feedback from the people tasked with maintaining aircrafts do you think CASA could work more collaboratively with the ALAEA to fix these issues? Um, without agreeing to the statement around the problem you've described, yes, I'm very keen to continue to work closely with the ALAEA. They're one of the first organisations that I, that I met with and I'll engage constructively with them so long as they engage constructively with us. And, and thank you for your offer to, to um, come back with the details and in committee to the chair, um, so just to the committee, so that would be of a great deal of assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it, Senator Sheldon? That's it. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Ms. Spence, 
as much as we'd love to spend all night talking to CASA, we, we can't, so we're going to let you go with our sincere thanks and look forward to seeing you at Estimates next year. Thanks, Senator.